Hey guys, it's Volesi here. Hope that you're having a good week. Uh, today I've got a bat rap for you that is between Morats and Corregidor. But uh, I do want to issue the warning that this is more of a casual game. It's it's a meme game. It's two meme -y kind of lists having a very silly game of Neural Net, which is a custom mission by me. And um, the thing I just want to say is that normally, I mean, you guys are expecting uh, like the high level analytical content from me. This is just going to be an exception this time, so we'll we'll just blast through the game and have a little bit of fun with it. Um, but again, don't expect like high level stuff um, happening. Um, before I get into the game, I just want to sort of give you guys a bit of a channel update and just um, a little bit of info about uh, stuff that's going on in my personal life. Oh, hang on, is my phone going off? Um, so, uh, I rent a five bedroom house in suburban Auckland in New Zealand and um, I sublet the rooms to other people. Um, you guys may have even seen a couple of my flatmates, uh, two young ladies uh, who live downstairs from me who have been in some of my comedy skit videos. Um, love them. They have moved out and um, left me with two rooms uh, to get new people in. We did get one guy um, uh, in recently, um, but then, um, New Zealand, actually, after being COVID-free for such a long time, um, has now had an outbreak of the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus. What happened is that there was a guy coming back from New South Wales, Australia, and he was being transferred, as from what I'm told, uh, from um, managed isolation quarantine through to another managed isolation quarantine from like one customs to the hotel or something like that. And somehow the virus slipped out and now there are like a couple of hundred cases floating around Auckland and we're back into sort of like that deep lockdown. Um, New Zealand has done well last time and we beat it last time and yeah, just hoping things um, work out the same way. But obviously the Delta variant of the virus is a bit more dangerous than um, the one we had last year. Um, I know everybody around the world is, is just really used to COVID. Well, not really used, it's, that's a poor choice of words, but you guys are much more familiar with being constantly in lockdown and dealing with it and the government doing nothing. For us, we've been spoiled because we've had the luxury of just that long period of, of not really um, having to worry about it. Somebody else's a problem. And now, you know, it's, it's back to being a reality. And like, if we don't beat it, we could end up like other countries. But everybody is locked indoors. And um, I'm renting this five bedroom house. And I've got four dudes um, in four of the rooms, including me, in this one empty room. And I can't collect rent uh, from that room. But I'm still surviving. It's, all, it's okay in terms of money. I've got a job. I'm working from home. Um, but the one guy that we did get into the flat um, right before the lockdown hit happened to be a friend of mine who I used to play Infinity with. In fact, when I started back in 2015, like six years ago, he was one of the first guys that I played against and was in one of my first bat reps. And I, I drove all the way across town to, to play against him. But he moved um, to another part of the country and now he's moved back. And I just happened to, you know, advertise my, my house on a Facebook and, he, and he, he moved in. And it happened to be right before the lockdown. But... Hilariously, this guy is a war gamer with tons of terrain and scratch built stuff. So he's got like a ton of boxes in my garage, um, which is full of war games terrain. So hilariously, we are kind of stuck in the house now because of lockdown, uh, but we can still play war games. And um, the bat rep I'm just going to bring to you today is just a casual game of Infinity. And look, the point is that this guy plays a lot of different systems. He does not really play Infinity very much. So that's why I'm running a meme list and why you won't run it. See, like a really high level ITS competitive game. But um, this is uh, one of our little living room areas here. Um, and as you can see, Scratch built this 8x4 table and um, has all of his boxes full of terrain. This is only like a tenth of what he's got. It's all downstairs in the, in the garage. But he's got a little sort of um, uh, little castle diorama set up. But anyway, we cleared that off and we set up a, a bit of a table. I'll just to show you what we've got here. So, where are we? Um, let me just see if I can find this. Here it is. So, um, he has one one of his like terrain sets is this spaceship um, terrain table, uh, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's 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 pretty old now, but it's all scratch built and sort of he's just drawn and carved in all these little bits and pieces and these plates and panels and you've got this little um, command station sort of bridge 
here and um, obviously I've thrown in some of my objective markers. We're going to be playing um, Neural Net, which is one of my custom missions um, where there are nine objectives and you've just got to get more of them uh, pressing the buttons, but uh, it gets harder to grab them the further the game goes on and also you can lock down one of your opponent's ones uh, so that they can't grab it. Yeah, um, so yeah, we'll just blast through this. Um, I've processed the photos, of course, so they have been uh, a little bit photo edited, but you can kind of see here that it's a bit bit different from the kind of terrain that I normally normally use. Um, I am going. I think I, I think he's going first for this game. So yeah, I, I chose deployment, I believe. So he's got his little link team of um, jaguars here. Although that looks like Senior Masker on the right, he's just using it as a normal jaguar. Then the uh, Gecko duo, uh, again, a lot of his stuff has been scratch built, including his miniatures, <laughs> so these are actually Geckos, or maybe they were like the old um, old school pre-sculpt Geckos, I'm not even sure. So he's got them, um, they're looking pretty sweet. Um, he's got a little link team of Alguacils, Alguacilo guys, don't know how to say the name, uh, with HMG in there, and yeah, pretty much just a very small list. Um, the sort of meme -y kind of list that I'm running has uh, the Kornak Pain Train, you know, a couple of Gakis in the second group, well, like four Gakis, and uh, a couple of Zerat multi snipers. So on my left hand flank here, you've got um, our drone, um, and there's Dr. Worm and his helper bot, a little Gaki along the side, and uh, a Zerat further upfield. I really didn't take many specialists, so this is the upfield Zerat multi sniper. At the back, you've got Kornak. Um, Kornak, obviously, his main strength is supplying the Strategos and the Lieutenant plus two, whatever he's got, um, to the team. So you're using the tactical awareness of the HMG and the Kornak's orders, and you want to try and bully their aero pieces and then drive across the board and just crush them. Um, you know, once Kornak gets in range with his Blister's Cool 17 multi marksman rifle and all that. Um, Tritac Anyat is in there, um, I did stuff her in there just because I didn't have enough button presses, but she is pretty cool with, um, smoke grenades and K1 combi rifle, um, you know, up against things like geckos, obviously, um, these guys don't really have any armor piercing, but the K1, um, combi rifle actually comes in kind of handy in that sort of situation. By the way, no, we're not using the, uh, the crit league rules for this, this is standard ITS. So another Gaki in the middle, um, there's my beautiful uh, heavy rocket launchery Morat, everybody loves that guy for his MSV-1, of course. Um, again, the little bridge terrain here on the right hand side, I've got my Gakis, and uh, that's actually a sensor bot drone, the M drone I think it's called, and an Icadron. Uh, my opponent uh, laying down an intruder sniper reserve trooper, and I've got a, another um, a Zerat sniper, although note that his intruder is like on the other side of this wall and I just sort of waited for that to appear before I put the Zerats because obviously the intruders are very good at beating up the Zerats long range because they have MSV2 and they've got Mimetism and they you know beat your um, Mimetism minus three, uh, six I should say. So there is that. Um, my opponent, I'm just starting by dropping some of these specialist Tomcats or whatever they're called, just the guys who come on the side of the table and just walking around uh, with his little helper bot to grab uh, the neural net buttons, which he does manage to do. As you can see, he's even scratch built these um, these little consoles. These things are like over five, probably closer to ten years old. By the way, he's done these way back in the day. Um, and he's got another one of these guys who comes on the other side of the table and moves around and, and goes to the other one. Although, unfortunately, this guy <laughs> walks on. Uh, I'll just bring my face cam down here. He walks him on like right um, on the corner. Um, so he gets flash pulsed here by this guy, and the Gaki gets a free dodge, but um, I miss with everything, so um, no real consequences there. Okay. Um, yeah, so he's just moving along towards the console once, once he moves out of, of line of sight, and uh, is booping the old button there. Oh, um, by the way, I, I love it how he's got this sort of like space dock thing, which can actually be opened and closed. So um, we we have had some custom missions in the past where like people, if they've got zero G and airborne deployment, they just sort of um, deploy through that dock, which is kind of kind of fun. So yeah, um, he's got this guy moving out here, and um, um, unfortunately for his intruder, I've set up my link team in such a way that he can't quite get line of sight to them. But if the geckos move out, he would be in line of sight of my heavy rocket launcher. So they're kind of pinned down. So there's the intruder there. Um, what he does decide to do is move the intruder back around here. So if I just grab that pen out again, I'll just grab a different color. So he starts around here and he decides to move back around here just so we can avoid various things and start having a go at 
um, you know, my um, heavy rocket launcher from a longer range and actually um, stop me from um, doing as well with this, the, um, the range band. So there he is there, plapping out a couple of shots and that does force my heavy rocket launcher to just to uh, poke back a bit um, after he takes a wound there, unfortunately, as you can see, bottom right. And um, that uh, opens up the alleyway for the geckos to move in because they're no longer pinned down by the arrow, so they move up through to the middle of the table and they're just setting up right in the middle. Cool, elsewhere Gaki's just running around, just being a nuisance, they've got very good dodge ability, and they just really want to dodge into close combat, and or explode at some point, and just generally make a nuisance of themselves, they're not really affecting the game all that much. Tiger creatures, on the other hand, would be a serious problem, but Gaki's, they have been kind of um, power creeped into the ground, sadly. Uh, we have another one on the left hand side, this one's just trying to dodge around the corner and then walk uh, a bit closer to this, this boy, but he doesn't really manage uh, to do that this turn, not enough orders. Okay, so um, my Zerat here, this is my turn of course, my Zerat is able to see his um, Alguacil heavy machine gun guy long range. And um, this is just like a classic, you know, casual player mistake where you shouldn't really be using a piece like that as your ARO piece because the the um, the Nomad Light Infantry guy is just Bliss Skill 11 with no mods. He's only burst 2 in, in reactive turn. And up against a Sniper with Mimitism minus 6, he's just going to get crushed. And in this particular case, it's long range as well. So he's up against cover, long range, Mimitism minus 6. He can't actually hit at all and has to dodge. So just a reminder to new players not to do that. Just put stuff like that into total cover. Don't try and watch the table and um, you know use a piece like that as an arrow. You want something a bit more dedicated and powerful and resilient like a gecko or an intruder. So this guy does uh, whack him. Um, he does pass an armor save though and just ducks into cover, which is pretty cool. So there's your Alguacile HMG. All right, that means that Kornak and his crew can move out around here. And the idea and the thinking here is for Kornak and the boys just to try and get into um, suitable range um, to actually take on the intruder at some point. Uh, before we get there, though, we're trying to um, put some damage onto his geckos. So we're all moving in, just blasting away here. And uh, sadly, my opponent rolls a crit. Takes the HMG down, which is kind of painful, but as you can see in the bottom left, I've got that slave drone to help out. So he's just moving up along the ladder here, along with Dr. Worm, who's going to going to be going after that objective, mind you. And then we're coming through to try and revive. Um, you can see the snake working his way through the crowd to to revive this um, Suya HMG. That's what happens. Suya moves back down, does get some more hits in. Kornak, uh, Kornak moves up. He's able to get some hits in. And uh, we're able to just move the whole team up um, eventually because the, the um, gecko that he's defending with does eventually go down after enough hits and I can move into the center here. Um, elsewhere, I do have a, um, uh, a sniper and um, you can see Dr. Worm moving over to press the button. So that's what he's trying to do there. And um, I'm able to use a cautious move to, to pull in through here and get um, Tritac into position where she can boop the middle button. Um, this does turn out to be the objective that my opponent has chosen as the one that's locked down for this mission, so I can't actually accomplish it. But it's still really good to um, just figure out which one it is early. As you can see from the top left of the photo, I've actually captured um, the one on my left. I can't grab, get, get the one in the middle here. So I think it's like one all or two to one in terms of the objectives. There is another gecko around here which we can go after. And also there is his intruder. Um, so I'm trying to sort of squeeze in and, and, and find some opportunities to pick them off, but, you know, cautiously so. And um, Kornak and Friend here are just moving to the edge of the warp platform where they can just climb down. So you have a bit of a shootout here of me against the Gecko, and honestly, can't 100% remember what was really happening here. Um, I think I managed to get um, Tritac in at some point with her K1 combi rifle, but I didn't manage to finish off this particular Gecko. So we are essentially just pulling back and hiding and Kornak and friend is just climbing down here. So Gaki's just hanging out and uh, Gaki's hanging out, hanging out. And um, then it's back to my opponent who can um, move in with his, his Jaguars. So the Jaguars move around, uh, they whip out the shotgun. My opponent was originally trying to use the chain rifle to do this, but that's not a good idea because dodging on 14s, you just walk past it. Whereas the boarding shotgun's a different story because you're hitting on like 21s after you factor in the link team. So uh, he does manage to take it down here. As you can see, he's attempting to use the template and then goes for the slugs, and that is what actually removes him um, after all of that. 
So, again, we've got the Tomcat boys uh, going after objectives and consoles, um, trying to avoid this Gaki, <laughs> um, which is just hanging out here. Um, then we have the Gecko uh, moving around and uh, just moving up the platform and just dropping out the pilot uh, to pick up a button uh, before um, consolidating and just moving behind this wall here, staying out of line of sight of the main link team. And he's defending this objective on my nearest to my deployment zone on my right. So I'm going to have to come up with some way of dealing with this, uh, this Gecko here. Um, Alguacil troops just reshuffling, Tomcat reshuffling, not too much else being done. And at this point in the game, uh, it swings back to me, and I decided to um, try to bait his intruder out of camo by offering him a shot with my Z-Rat. Now, the Z-Rat, unfortunately, um, hits on like fives against the um, the intruder. Something something terrible. Um, Blister skill 11, range band's fine, cover's fine, takes me down to like an eight, actually. Whereas the intruder is hitting back on a 13. So I sort of was offering this up as a sacrifice. He's also got the Alguacila HMG standing back up again. But um, the Xerat's having a go at it here. And um, at this sort of range, the intruder is, is meant to be doing pretty well. Um, unfortunately for him, what ends up happening is I managed to actually uh, win the firefight with the, um, with, the, with the Xerat. So that actually does take his intruder down. So, pretty pretty pivotal mo moment in the game, really, where I get lucky, and um, I've, I've essentially taken a small risk uh, for a really high potential reward, and that actually has paid off, and um, the intruder does get taken down, which um, means that my boys here can now move out and get into a position where they can take on um, the gecko a bit more reliably. You've also got the other Zerat, which can take down the, um, the Alguacila, which you can't really see in the picture, but he's off in the distance. So everything's fine, really. And now my Gaggy can move out. Um, he can't really do much more than dodge uh, with his Gecko. And the Gaki does have one little thing going for it, which is climbing plus. So what he can do is he can use his second shot skill to walk into close combat when the Gecko fails his dodge. And that kind of just pins him in place a little bit for me to get around and, and deal with him. So now my Rack to Rack can move around. He's moving around, moves and just grabs this uh, all-important console, which is something you really want to do before um, you know the game goes a little bit too late because every turn it's becoming harder and harder to hit the um, hit the objective in this mission. So here you have the rack to rack, rack moving around. Um, it does give him an opportunity to dodge out of close combat, but he doesn't really dodge into the best position. And uh, sadly for him, this allows me to shred him with Kornak. And then um, after I move um, Anyat in, Anyat can also come around here with a wonderful K1 combi rifle, and uh, we can actually see how much uh, damage you can really do when you have the appropriate target, which is a tag. So uh, tri tag moving through and just ripping him a new one. So um, his tag goes down, the rack to rack can grab the console, and um, Gaki's just moving around and getting shot, of course. Uh, that's um, nothing new. In fact, this Gaki moves over through here and um, makes it uh, over to close combat, I think, but then just dies somehow. So that was kind of funny. Yeah, um, so anyway, um, the Zerat has taken on the intruder and killed it somehow, and um, things are looking really good for me because I can just consolidate my link team, uh, move out as a three-piece, and really just wait for his last turn, and um, uh, just hang out, just camp, basically. So my opponent, um, as you can see here, he's uh, picked up the console. I haven't actually picked this one back up. It's actually three points to two in his favor. So um, he's now moving out and around with um, his guys, just trying to set up um, a strong point. He's also got his uh, Jaguars moving out, and they're just making a little train here. The Gaki's trying to get in range, but he blasts him with a shotgun again, so all my dodging is for naught. And uh, basically just moves his, his way into the middle of the table where he can just set up and camp and uh, really just uh, defend against me going and grabbing an objective. But the problem with that is that... Um, my Ractorac's right there, and I can just move over and just retake this console. I am at a minus three deficit, but with so many orders from Kornak, um, I'm able to just basically just take that um, console back off him, swing it over to three to two advantage to me, and then just for laughs, the Ractorac moves around and lets go his Vulcan shotgun into the boys here. So, um, kind of a fun game, casual game. Obviously, the lists weren't competitive lists, and some of the actions that I was taking you know, really were just designed to sort of keep this a fun and engaging game of Infinity. 
because um, we're inside now and um, we can't really go and meet people to play games because of COVID-19. Um, but we can play each other in the flat and of course uh, we can play TTS but my opponent's not really much of a TTS guy. Um, so yeah, it was fun to crank this game out. Um, I'm going to be showing off some more of this guy's scratch-built terrain over the next couple of months. Um, hopefully, um, the lockdown the government's got us in, which is quite strict and has worked before, um, will be effective and you know will be out to play within uh, a month or two. But yeah, just got to play it safe, and I'm just really hoping that we don't really go the way of the rest of the world and uh, just let the whole let the whole thing slip and just don't contain it. Anyway, guys, that was a little bit about my life and about my latest war game. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think.